Hey guys, and welcome back to Trek Yards. He's Commander Cocking. He's Captain Foley. And today we're here to talk about more Lower Decks, Season 3, Episode 6. And this one is called Here All Trust Nothing. I disagree. It's called Star Trek Lower Decks Deep Space Nine. Well, yeah, they actually, they actually get a chance to visit the t tacky, Cardassian fascist eyesore, which I laughed at. But what do you think of an episode, Stuart? Hands up compared to the other five. I thought this one was great. The best of this season. Uh, I said that last for the last episode. This one's better than that one. And it's definitely up there in the ranks of all of the lower decks, I think. Um, just for the return to DS9 and some legacy characters. The, the B story with Mariner was eh, kind of underwhelming until the end where she Marinered on everybody. And uh, I thought that was pretty fantastic as well. And it says um, a lot that she's someone that brings a phaser to a sleepover because no yeah. one else would have one and there wouldn't be one in the quarters so immediately yeah <laughs> but she brought a yeah. phaser which yeah. tells you does she have a holster on her the entire time she didn't pull a phaser out of a blank so what do they think when they walk with her because you know I know it's a cartoon but she still had to have it on her I think the DS9 stuff was all very well done it was great to see Kira and Quark and um, the promenade and even get the reference to Jake, the junior reporter up there. Lots of nice little references. They even mentioned Smiley um, at one point. And uh, yeah, it was a really fun episode. Love the Orion thing. Loved seeing Tendi go to town and do her pirating business. Uh, it was just, there was a lot of good stuff in this one. It was fun. It was fast paced and action filled. And, you know, we got more Quark, which is always good. Got references to other DS9 episodes like the, the Kira body with the Quark head. Awesome. And I love the shacks and uh, Kira dynamic of you owe me one. No, I, you, you know, I thought that was hilarious, the back and forth. So, um, and usually the Bajoran stuff I don't care for, you know, her, her friends that saved her, all that, I don't, don't care. But that was hilarious. So just knowing, watching all of DS9 now that Shax and her had like this history together in the resistance is kind of funny. So, yeah, I thought it was a good episode. How about you, sir? I, I'm i left at the end thinking, did I just watch a Lower Decks episode or a DS9 episode? Exactly. I have that bit of confusion because it, it it is both and it is neither. But it really is fully committed to the bit of being a DS9 episode. And I think that Mike's only said, Let, let's tell a DS9 story that happens to take place in Lower Decks. So it's a very interesting hybrid piece. Um, not many shows can accidentally have a different show inside your own show. I mean, Mandalorian did it with Book of Effect of Mandalorian. Everyone loved that. Uh, the, sh the episode, not sorry, the, the idea. So that was really interesting. And certainly to, you know, I I think I called very early on that Kira and Quark were the obvious two functional reasons as, aside just they're around. So that was good. Every time they were in it, it, it developed it more. Having Quark be the, the centre of the plot, great. Very smart. It lets you... You know, it, now it feels like a gimmick, but in the show he was in, it was a standard trope of the day, and so it shouldn't be then limited by the fact that he's now a guest star. It's like no, he is off. You know, he is that crook guy that means well but does things, and like that's that's all in type. So that worked really well to to have that. And I just watched the the uh, Caraman, whatever they called people episode um, for DS for Defiant reference like a year ago for for set. You know, it's fully in in the Defiant. Thing. So I remember James Cromwell as that guy very explicitly in that those scenes, and that was a very memorable ship and an alien. So that was really nice to see him back. And I kind of you know was like, ah, I, I get this fully. So that was all good. That was you know, but then when you cut to the low decks aspects, they literally put Boimler in the corner. Now I I thought his plot was great. He was fantastic for once. Like there, there's no caveat to that. Like awesome, brilliant. But he was in a corner. Um, ten Rutherford just got the joke B lines, you know. Really? Oh my God! Hey! And it's fine for him, but that's all he got. Tendy got a chunk, so great for her if I didn't get something, and that was really, really, really solid, right? And then Mariner got put in a room, in a weirdly weird scene that didn't really make. A, it's weird, but it's meant to be weird. So, yeah, uh, I did, I hope she gets in trouble though, because you can't just phase the people and get away with it. Stun or no stun, it's not okay. Like, she, she broke the rules. Well, I mean, she likes the brig, so she should, should go to the brig, even to save them from asphyxiation. Like, try phasing the door first. Like, that 
Um, so that was weird because they spent so much time on the DS9 plot that it feels it's weird hybrid. But it was a pretty good DS9 episode. That's the irony. <laughs> the storyline was so grounded. The characters were reasonably well done. I mean, Nana certainly sounded a lot older, but was fine. You got used, to, I thought, used to Armour's quark pretty quickly. He sounded weird for the first like five lines, and then he got into a swing pretty pretty quickly. So it was it was a it was a really interesting odd episode. Good. It needs to be twice as long, <laughs> really, or, or a third as long. Or, or I don't know why they couldn't have you know organized a special where it's five minutes longer or something. But definitely super interesting, and I mean never been done before. It'd probably never be done again. I know that Low Decks crossover with Strange Worlds is happening, but that's a Strange Worlds episode with Low Decks people in it. Won't be as full on as this. Well, speaking of Quark, it did sound like he did have his prosthetic teeth in, which I appreciated. Um, so that was good. And we also got a reference to the Vancouver again. Um, one of the Parliament class ships that we saw before, so that was nice. <laughs> we got Merck and Orion, who is raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. And he, again, he was trying to he, he, he kind of followed that trope of Worf, who grew, grew up on Earth and was more Klingon than most Klingons because he really wanted to be. This guy was so Orion, it was hilarious, or Orion pirate anyway. Um, he got all his information from the bad novels, the one with the boobs on the cover. I appreciated that because um, those are always the, the cheesy, you know, over the top, exaggerated novels. Um, it, very, very annoying character very quickly and i love how tendy just snapped on him and you know said not all not all ryan's are about that and their back and forth was really great and then it just turned on a dime when uh she took his um orion multi-key and just went to town on the ship and the, the crew and you know she was raised not only as a in a pirate family but also in the orion syndicate like she's full on Orion. <laughs> So something you didn't really expect from Tendi, I guess, but it makes sense why she's so opposed to it because she grew up like in the heart of it. Um, so she's kind of rebelling against her family and the lifestyle. So I thought that was great. <clears throat> yeah, there's always the trick with he's meant to be annoying. So there's the audience actually annoyed at him versus audience with the characters annoyed at him. It's like the late Kai Wynn actor. She was a horrible character that everyone hated because she was trying to be like it's hard to watch her sometimes because she's so awful. Yet on purpose. <laughs> so this person's meant to be obnoxious and annoying on purpose. So you kind of got to you know, accept that pretty quickly. But, you know, fun, they're different, they're different shades of green. I liked that. It was a very, very small nod to the, yeah, you know, meh, all the verish under the sun. Because they easily could have made a joke about, oh, are you from, you know, West Arias or whatever. And they vaguely did, but not, not really. Interesting to work out where they were going to take him. I obviously assumed he was a spy or some sort, because you can't be that obviously trying to flaunt the rules and talk about pirating everything and not get in trouble every other day. I, I guess he's he can't be talking like that with all the normal security staff because that would be stupid and he'd get fired or, you know, he'd get through. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But I guess he's just feeling like, ah, oh, he's with an Orion, I can be fun. I guess he's trying to more gauge her Orionness to see his. So I guess he was over-exaggerating because I can't imagine there's anything like where he's like in normal operations because he just couldn't function. And DS9 is quite strict. I mean, Odo is not going to let that fly because he was obviously security because he had, a, you know, he was security. So Odo is not going to allow that. But he was, he was good at the, 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 the sense of what the. It's a good culture to go into because yes, just like the Ferengi, there is the you know sixty seventy percent of the culture is one thing because that's just kind of what they are. But it isn't everybody? But it's still the majority. So it's fun to then see the the both sides of the coin at the exact same time. What is he over exaggerating to do? And then yes, the the dime flip. But it's nicely more in Starfleet and 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 I mean Tendi, I, I certainly expected that from her based on her previous time on on a Ryan Colony when she you know choked somebody with a boot. It's like I totally, I mean I was I was waiting for that to happen honestly. Uh, just the fact that she then stole the tooth that that's the thing where you know the the um, uh, muscle memory kicks in versus the what I was trained. That was that was fun. Kind of wish for a bit more security, but they are traders, so that's a okay. But no, it was uh, yeah, a good good subplot, good for Tendi, obviously. Gave her both a heavy-handed, ah, anti-Orion, but also, ah, I was a, maybe not a pirate necessarily by any means, but she was, you know, the, the girl on deck three who was with the ships doing all the dodgy stuff, and she was reading a book, but she was trained to do all the stuff. Didn't do it herself, but she was there the whole time, sort of vibe. I love how he got the, relig uh, the religious exemption to wear his multi-key as well. That was a nice little touch. 
Um, I don't think it'd work if it wasn't security because it clearly it's a very useful tool. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But but weird because it's not religion to be a pirate. Uh, the Karima, the ship, reminded me very much of a D five from Enterprise. <laughs> well, John designed both, so. Yeah, I mean, when it first came in, I'm like, "Wow, it, it's got so many D five elements in the cells, the front." I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point, but I just wanted to point that out here in case anybody was wondering. Uh, we did notice that, so. I mean, it's always been a great ship. It was one of those few new assets they built because they didn't build very many, uh, and then then you see it often flying around. Um, so do you think there's a better comeback than Kira or 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 uh, Quark? Quark, hands down. Quark just felt like the exact same character, um, even down to stealing the, the technology for the Quark 2000 and just him kind of groveling at the end. Kira just didn't sound like Kira. I know it's an older Kira. Um, Although did only like three years. She's aged 20 years in three years. I did appreciate that uh, Cisco's office was still Cisco's office, still the baseball on there, because he that means he'll be coming back. Um, that's the well, whole thing. I, I think she'd keep it. I mean, Jake would insist she'd keep it, so if it's her office. Exactly. He's... He could come back at any time, and that's kind of the thing, even with the when Gold Ducat was there and had the baseball. They knew he was coming back because he left his baseball there. <laughs> so that was kind of a nice touch. I don't know. Kira, Kira just didn't feel like Kira to me. Sorry. Yeah, I well, she, I mean, she had one joke and exposition. Court got a lot more fun bits. I will say I was so relieved that she didn't go the route of the DS9 Season 8 doc. I hated what they did with Kira in that. I thought it was terrible. So the fact she was just, just took over the job and kept running it like normal. Of course she would. She wouldn't do anything radical. I mean, she's there to keep the legacy of her friend and to look after her people and it was going well for so many years it's like yeah she was you know same costume same vibe give or take yeah I kind of liked it wasn't a great departure because why would it be I think Quark yeah they did a good job making him so focused I think what really sold me on Quark was when he screamed like a like a, a high pitched scream that that is when I'm like yeah he is because he cause you gotta remember their guys haven't been these characters in like 20 years that is a significant because we might watch the show every every few months years whatever like other people have come back occasionally. These people have never. Boom, they're back. And, and you know, unlike season one and two, they those weren't cameos. Kira was, was on the line of being just enough to be... Well, she's there, but she's not fully there. Cork was definitely there. But they both had enough. Um, but, I mean, what a fine line of, of giving everybody dialogue. I mean, my God. I, 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 it's like um the first Avengers film. You know, when, they, when, you, when you... Do we know how many minutes each, each Avenger got? And he got, like, nine characters to service. It's, like, such a hard ratio but they almost got it perfect so i say five more minutes a bit more would have been good and 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 last of all i will I'll say i was very intrigued to see how they're going to approach mariner and ds9 because they they've addressed that she was there during wharf stint which means she was there during the entire war which means she would have been on the defiant and all those because the entire crew sort of migrated with that so she was there just like keely was my, my keely character ah um, and, and the fact she didn't want to go on DS9 was a great sign. Keely also doesn't want to go to DS9. That was nice and forced, or, or forced not to, but then at the end, they do recognise her. I wish had a bit more of that. I think Mike didn't want to pull the pin out of the grenade for those scenes. He kind of kept it lodged in, so I wanted a bit more of a, oh, you've not changed since Rentac 6, and that's actually an episode that's like, oh my god, she was there, and I wanted a bit more of that, but that was obviously an, after, an epilogue scene. But at least, you know, she knew them, and that was, you know, good for Tony Newsom. I mean, you know, not many shows you suddenly get two legacies back, and she's a huge fan, and so she got to be friend of, well, friends is generous. But knowing these people flawlessly is a hell of a trick, old Tony. What do you think, then, how they address the, the Mariner and DS9 connection? Perfect. Although well, she didn't mm. want to go over. Um, and I love how even Kira comes up to her and is like, hey, Mariner, I wonder when I'd see you. And her whole thing with Quark and the, the his, her bar tab. Um, was, was very well done, very well played, um, and and not over the top. It was just kind of perfect. Awesome. So. One more bit, because I'm also I'm so curious about it. Uh, I got to say, there were a lot of Klingons on DS9, which is a nice touch, and a new store on the promenade. Batless are us. That was a nice added feature with the um, sort of Kalos replica at the front. You know, you gotta, you gotta. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was great, and uh, yeah, um, I don't know what I expected necessarily, but I think I got everything that I. I feel like I needed out of this episode and seeing DS9 again, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it was it was somewhat it was it was cathartic in a weird way because it really was like oh we're back here, 
they didn't push as far as they could have gone, but with that time length, they really couldn't have, really. But it really did feel like a DS9 episode. That's really weird, in a good way. Um, so can you make a Voyager episode now with a Enterprise episode? Like, you've got the power, mic. Or, you know, bring George Takei back, we've got him, and do a, do a Captain Sulu episode, you know, do flashbacks again and again. You know, you've got the... Ah! Because that's the thing, you know, you couldn't hire these people to look like they did 20 years ago, but you, and they don't sound the same either, but you can you can play into the, it's only been a few years. It's a chance, you know, utilise it more. Yeah. And, I, and I, I hope people don't say, wow, it felt so gimmicky. It really didn't. There was no, wow, we brought Quark back. No, it was entirely integrated, entirely thought out, entirely reasoned. Yeah, I, I it's not fan service, it's, well, these are the two people, of course, you would meet. Like, of course, I wish there was, the Nodo, I wish there was an Odo reference or something to link into he's in trouble or, like, maybe he steps in at the end and doesn't say anything, obviously, because he can't anymore. But, you know, so, some level of, well, he's in trouble and they're, you know, could have a little bit more, but, yeah. Well, that would have been a great way to end it because it ends on the the quark line, you know, rule of acquisition number nine, opportunity plus instinct equals profit. And then it would have been great just to have a soundbite of uh, Rene uh, Avenois Odo saying, quark! And then fade to black. Because I would have post credited it with him walking, yeah, and then Oda walking in, and yeah, like I said, voiceover lines like, "Oh, constable, when will this game never end?" <laughs> you know, yeah, but that's, it's fine. It's just you know, the the cherry on the cherry on top, as it were. Yeah. And on that note, guys, comment down below what you thought about this episode. Let us know your thoughts. We do care. We'd love to hear your opinions on things. So. Uh, join the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all those things that you normally do, and join us for those lives where we do want to hear your thoughts in real time and actually interact with you. So come and join us. And if you can, and please do if you can, super chat, super thanks, Patreon, PayPal, join the channel, buy merch, all of the many items, all of the links are down below in the description. But super chat and join lives is super fun because it gives us energy, it gives us finances, it keeps our rent paid, and allows you to have a direct line to talk to the audience, uh, if you have a thought, comment, question, or even a, oh, I noticed that. Well, maybe other people didn't, and you can open their eyes. So let us know via Super Chat. That's right. So until next time, he is still Commander Cockings. He's still Captain Freddy. And we will see you guys later. Bye, guys. <laughs>